So we now continue with the path integral formalism and what we are trying to achieve is to create a formalism to calculate uh, correlation functions in quantum field theory. Okay. So there are several steps that we go through to get to that point um, and I will explain that in a few minutes. Uh, let us begin with winding up some uh, interesting points about the path integral uh, formula. One is that uh, one is that it automatically gives time ordered products. Okay. So the point is suppose we think of e raised to i s we might be dropping h cross very soon so but let me put it this time we can think of e raised to i s i s over h cross as a weight function and define some kind of average of uh, <coughs> some some function that depends on q any uh, function dependent on q. So it would be actually a functional well actually q and t q and p. We will see in what sense this is an average value and yet not really not your ordinary average value but certainly a very important quantity. So in fact this is how mostly path integral is used okay. for all practical purposes. The main purpose of the path integral is not to calculate a transition amplitude from initial to final state nobody does that. What one does is actually use it to compute certain kinds of uh, expectation values which we eventually will call Green's functions. Okay. So, uh, so we can note here more generally correlation functions
okay. So <coughs> that is the end of that side comment. So the point is that therefore, so consider uh, the, this property. So suppose you are cal uh, suppose you have two operators at two different times which you are trying to calculate. So by this I mean O at Q's of T1, P of T1 and this is O1, O2 of Q of T2, P of T2. Right. So, suppose you have two different operators, uh, unfortunately I do not mean to match this one with one. So, we could call it something else, call it one like this and two, okay. it is not that this has to do with this. But there is a time coordinate we are using for, a, for the first operator and another time coordinate you are using for the other operator, then this will become integral dp dq of and now as per our instruction we put O1 and I am uh, dropping all the detail of what this is O1 O2 e raised to i s over h cross, right. This is what it asks us to do. This is the definition of that uh, product, averaged product, okay. But now we see what happens if we implement the detail of this. We get a diagram like this that I have q t and we are suppressing p because we do not have that many axes without getting confused. So, this is t i and t f and then let us say uh, I draw t 1, T2 something like this. Now I change my notation because I unfortunately used, okay. So I have time slices. But let us say T1 is over here and T2 is over here. So the instruction says that you will take uh, starting with TIQI to QF at T f you you are supposed to do this right uh, T 2 is here right. So, wherever you like some one path is like this. Now, because to take account of this T 1 and T 2 what we will do is we can introduce additional slice exactly at that point. Okay. So, <coughs> so of course, then uh, you can get something like go up to here, then here and then you go there and then there and then there uh, and then at T 2 you know. Of course, you have to reach the same final point. So, so you could add additional slices and then 
uh, it is just a matter of the detail of setting up the time slicing. Ultimately, you are supposed to take the limit of the all the slices coming very close to each other, uh, infinite number of time slices. So, automatically the T1 and T2 are going to get covered in that, but we are just illustrating that also strategically in this sliced version before having got to the limit, make sure that T1 and T2 are included in the list of slices. But once we do this, we see that uh, if T1 is, so the point is the slices are ordered. So if T1 is less than T2, then T1 slice will appear before T2. In above, in above example, T1 is less than T2. Therefore, in the averaging, the operator O1 will automatically appear first. When you begin to average, it will get averaged first. And similarly, vice versa, okay. So, in quantum mechanics, we are concerned about ordering of operators. What we will find is that automatically, if T1 is less than T2, then T1 will appear actually to this side because you are uh, slicing like this. So, it will go like this and then if it is T2, the, then 2 will appear later. So, uh, in the time ordering prescription, what we uh, say, so what we do is that we write a compact formula for this. Okay. One more important comment to make. Uh, Note that the path integral is a very interesting formula because it actually involves no operators. The path integral formulation of quantum mechanics does not talk about any operators. It does talk about initial state and final state between which the transition amplitude is calculated. So the states are there, but we do not have to introduce any operators because all the operators are just classical. It is just that they are going to be integrated functionally by this complicated time sliced measure. Okay. So, note that one, so one more comment. Formulation. does not require promoting dynamical variables to operators. we automatically get uh, average values or expectation values by doing a time slice functional integral. Okay. So, here particularly, we, but, but it does maintain
and by time ordered we mean If T1 is, so whichever is before gets integrated first and our quantum mechanics notation is that we go in state to out state left to right. So if T1 is less than T2 then it has the meaning of being O2 T2 O1 T1. And if T, T1 is greater than T2, then T1 will be on this side. So, thus, we find that this two point function, as you might call it, or this product operator product uh, uh, average value, will be automatically ordered in the path integral. So, this is still continuing with comment number 1. Thus, this uh, integral dp dq of O1 T1 by that we mean actually this whole thing because it is O is a functional of P and Q. You, we could write just not to get completely lost is uh, Q1 P1 right O2 of Q2 P2 <coughs> e raise to i S over H cross will automatically calculate the expectation value of the time ordered product of it will calculate automatically the time ordered average value as you would have done I mean in quantum mechanics the order becomes important. So, this will automatically give this whether you like it or not, but amazingly enough that is exactly what you like as you know from uh, your quantum 3 course right. Now, the second comment is about the classical limit. I write these things out in lo long detail and not always very accurate, but it is a marker for you to remember what was said because if you write out formally without the remarks then you will probably not understand what was the motivation for what. So, with the understanding that within the expressions O1 and O2, uh, P's will need to go to the left of the right uh, of the Q's. you could have of course defined your whole path integral with some other ordering prescription. You could have said q's to the right piece to the left. It is matter of slicing remember how we started inserting the complete set of states. You could have started it from this end instead of that end. So, whatever prescription you followed there will automatically apply here. P's will go need to the left of the q's uh, in our notation in our convention. or whichever convention we 
was used to derive the basic formula. Very good. So, so you have to take care of that part and which is where effectively you will be uh, constrained by what quantum interpretation you are giving to your or what is your uh, proposed quantum operator is implicitly there in the formula. But you do not have to I mean in terms of formalism when you use it you do not have to pr promote but I, I, I guess I agree with you. You will have to remember to order your operator that way and if your operator is different then you should have the additional pieces that come from that normal ordering which should be retained with the operator. Good. So, this is uh, corrected by this. But I can tell you that uh, just the way it is written an expression like this which although this is highly non-trivial in terms of real analysis or multivariate analysis and because of the oscillating there nothing uh, mathematicians will faint several times over looking at this expression uh, because it just makes no sense in any way at all. But anyway if you look at this then nowhere do you have to put any quantum variable and you get a answer for a transition amplitude between one quantum state and the other. And so, uh, Wheeler, Wheeler, John Wheeler who had the, who always used to create jokes about this uh, something without something. So, he used to say path integral is quantum mechanics without quantum mechanics. Feynman was a student, he wrote the thesis with him. So, path integral is quantum, uh, quantum mechanics without quantum mechanics. Okay, not really as we just learned, but it looks, it is good to tell people like that when they do not fully know the nitty gritties. All right. So, the other comment was that uh, uh, the classical limit to understand this we need to understand what is called uh, stationary phase approximation in uh, integration. So, suppose we have an integral uh, j equal to and let me leave some gap here integral dx over the whole range e raised to i times some function of x ok. So, this is the basically the integral suppose I am integrating something that has e raised to i times some function of x which is what the form of our path integral is. Uh, to keep track of this h cross or to keep track of I mean some putting some scale in the problem we insert a bookkeeping quant, uh, constant lambda number lambda, but then consider this in the limit of lambda going to 0 or lambda small ok. You do not have to take the technical limit, but what we mean is as lambda gets smaller it is possible to arrive at an estimate ok. of this integral. So, the point is that now we look at this it is integral d x suppose it was not any complicated f, but just e raise to i x then you know that it is sin x plus cos, cos x plus i sin x. If you integrate over the whole range you are going to get nothing it is just going to keep cancelling you will get some oscillatory answer depending on where you stop 
but overall it is just not, uh, it just gives you nothing definite as you go through several cycles they keep cancelling each other. So, you do not get any very definite answer, but certainly not any divergent answer either ok. So, what you so if you then try to try to think of what happens uh, to this f of x e raise to i f of x you can try to plot let us say the real part of it. So, suppose we plot real part of uh, or that is to say cosine of f of x. Now, whatever f is cos can only oscillate between plus and minus 1. So, without worrying too much where the 0 of f is and so on we just uh, I just draw some random curve ok. It just keeps oscillating between minus 1 and plus 1. But now let us specialize on some points. So, such a thing might arise by let us say if f was monotonically progressing from here to here. So, over this it is just as if it is cosine x right it is happening rather regularly. So, you might say it is just going something straight like this and then it may turn over ok. So, suppose f is drawn here. What you will find is that when f is doing something non trivial, this will keep oscillating, but precisely where f actually goes through a minimum, it is stationary. It f is not advancing, then this cos function will stay put there. Okay. So, what you say is that uh, I will look at the points where f is extrema the points where f is extrema is where the progress of the argument of cosine is going to slow down and for some time it will stay near a constant value. So, we uh, so if x 0 is uh, is a minimum is an extremum And uh, J receives a non zero contribution. So, we just <coughs> take not bothering to put and the point is as you make lambda smaller f will become much the exponent will become much larger. So, small changes in f will make f over lambda run over a long range. So, it will just make the oscillations much faster as lambda goes to 0 except at the point where it has actually hit a minimum. So, we get uh, integral d x and we can write it as equal to e raise to i. So, we expand around x 0. The next term is not there because the derivative is 0 right. So, plus it would be f prime x 0 uh, over uh, times x minus x 0 over h cross uh, over <laughs> lambda right, but this is equal to 0 and we will just have the next term f double prime of x 0 times x minus x 0 over to squared uh, over lambda. 
dot dot dot. So, it is approximate I did forget the higher order terms and we proudly retain this term because we know how to do Gauss, fake Gaussian integrals. So, all we have to do is that therefore, this becomes equal to e raised to i f x 0 over lambda comes out right it is a constant. What remains is our friend the uh, the ill defined Gaussian integral. So, it is just equal to square root of you are expert at doing this by now 2 lambda over i f prime but now the consequence of this in our case is that the path integral receives non and so we can generalize to several in, in, in instead of one extremum if it had several all it becomes is a sum over each of them with contribution like this from each of them aside from the stationary phase there the uh, fluctuation Gaussian fluctuations you get there. So, can be generalized to note that you should not have any guilt uh, this is minus infinity to infinity. So, at any one point you did this now you go to another point you say oh, but when the when I am integrating there this enters no you do not have to worry you put this expression for one and because all the nearby points is just going to give you infinite 0 because of oscillatory behavior if you once you estimate it like this it will actually become just sum over all the uh, extrema happily with integral minus infinity to infinity because everything else at each of them is just giving zeros. So, you can just generalize it by putting sum over n. So, can be generalized to several extrema. So, in the path integral case uh, <coughs> we get maximum contribution or we get uh, non zero contribution precisely where So, with I have not put any below you can put with respect to x or with respect to p both, but wherever the variation of s is 0 and now s is a functional of the trajectory x t p t. So, precisely on that classical and this is the classical condition. So, at these points uh, uh, on the classical trajectory the path integral will give this answer some overall constant which is not of importance, but the point is that that is what will do dominate the classical trajectories will dominate. And remember that s has to be measured in the units of h cross just as this f was measured in the units of lambda. So, if you are living in a world where s is much much bigger than h cross then any tiniest variation of the path from classical will make this f run so fast that it will wiggle so fast that it will contribute nothing to the integration. So, that is the answer ok. So, uh, we can leave it at that thus the classical limit corresponds to
quantum mechanics is this strange theory where you can superpose various states. So, if you have a cricket ball then its location here with momentum this can be superposed with its location there with momentum that and so on. But the fielder out there is managing to catch the ball where he is supposed to because any all the deviations that happened on the way are all cancelled out. Okay, gets it exactly with the correct Q and P. Uh, 